This is my next project. This is an art, a vintage artist case, and it's very cool. You can see the handle is a little ratty, but it's got a metal thing in there, so we're gonna be able to do that. This is a really neat system for locking it. You do flip these up, and then you turn it to close it. We're not gonna do that right now. There's a little secret opening to open it up and get in there. That would have been to pull the pallet out, but the pallet's gone. The inside's a little rough, you can tell. But it used to be a artist case, and that's what it's gonna be again, but it's gonna be super pretty when we're all done with it. Can't wait. Checking in on the um, artist box project. So first off, I taped off the um, hardware. I didn't do all of it because I can just scrape off the paint if I need to. But the next step was to chalk paint the whole inside and outside. And I don't know about you, but um, chalk paint feels really weird to me. The reason I like it though, is because you don't have to sand the piece. This piece was pretty rough anyways and old, but you don't have to sand the piece or use the um, cheesecloth to get up the sanding. Uh, chalk paint sort of acts as a primer and adheres very well to old wood. And then I am kind of laying out the pattern for it, I want to have each in between each area. I want that to be in black or a pretty dark color, but I also don't want that color to bleed through. I want these to be at least a little bit relatively light so that I can go through and just grunge them up where I want to, but not to be, um, if I were to put this girl on dark, she wouldn't pop off anymore. She would, the, the dark paint would come through here and she would be um, very dim and dingy looking. So that's going to be the next step. Okay, here's a dorky middle step that I didn't take a video of, but I thought was super important. Um, I painted black lines with Dana Wakely gel medium or a, a thinner glaze and black. And the reason I wanted to do that was so that it wouldn't be so bright and I wouldn't have to do all over the top of the tissue paper. I could have a black background in there already. All right, this part is done. I have the background papers all the way around and I love how the dark part came through. That was exactly how I had envisioned it. All right, I went ahead and added some grunge to it. So there is some jelly plate tissue paper I made with my son. There is some Tim Holtz uh, tissue paper, some regular tissue paper, a little bit more Tim Holtz, like a label on the edge. You can tell the, the Mod Podge is still wet and just a whole bunch of like grunge added to it. And then there's my helper. All right, for this one, I had to come where there's a little bit more light or you wouldn't be able to see all the details here. What I did next was I went through and I used archival with a little blending tool to go along the edges here. And then I went back over the lines with um, Dina Winkley glazing medium and just black acrylic paint and darkened everything up. And I took, I, I put just a hint of black on all of these because they were super bright white and they were jumping off and I didn't want that. Okay, so the next step is done. I put um, Tim Holtz tissue paper all throughout the inside of this. And then I am gonna have to paint this edge black because it shows from the outside. And then my daughter and I picked some cute pieces of tissue paper that I made using um, Graphics Fairy and then sent to Zazzle to have it printed on tissue paper. So there's gonna be a bunch of those. We picked out a whole bunch of stuff and I'm gonna use Antique Mod Podge and a little bit of brown paint or a little bit of dye. I'm gonna test all kinds of stuff and see what I like the best to antique it up. Okay, so the inside's done now and it turned out amazing. I love how the regular vintage Mod Podge is, is lighter. Then I did some with the yellow, with yellow paint mixed in with Mod Podge. And then for the dirty, grimy 
corner edges. This isn't actually dirty. This is just um, that vintage Mod Podge with uh, brown paint in it. So that's how that dirty part got done. And I did, I glued down all the things that we had seen before. I think this top part is, came out amazing. Um, so I'm super thrilled with it. So the last step is the handle. All right, for this step, I had to, um, I wanted to do strips of cloth on the handles, but all the cloth I had, I was super excited. I love the batik. I love the patterns I had, but they were all very bright colors. You see the, like the red and the yellows and the blues, and I had some rainbow colors and I needed to grunge them up a little bit. So I decided to use, um, the ones that worked the best were the mermaid stain, the brown on the right end, the distress stain from Tim Holtz that I could put, um, it has a dauber on it, so I could put that specifically where I needed a little bit of grunge, and then the distress reinkers. Um, I mixed that with some plain old alcohol and thinned it out a wee little bit, and that worked perfectly. Okay, so this is the inside that's done. I love how it got antique looking. And then it has a really cool closure that flips over to close it. And luckily I didn't glue any of that shut. Got the handle all done with the uh, distressed ribbons. And then this is it standing up. And this is the front side final. This is the favorite my most favorite project I have ever done. And so I wanted to take just a second here at the end and talk about some things I learned along the way. So first off, I learned that you can have a vision and complete it and it can turn out as good as you want, but also that along the way, there's parts of it that aren't perfect. So here and there, the tissue paper didn't work right. And I got too much black on some places and I didn't get enough black on some places. And I wasn't sure if the inside would turn out right partway through, it looked terrible. But the whole point is to keep going and there's nothing you can't undo. Like if I really hated how the inside looked, I could have grunged it up like I did the outside. If I really hated parts of the outside, I could sand it and put another layer on. So. I would say that if you're doing a project like this that is just for love, that I'm keeping this one, I'm going to use it as my own little art box, um, then just go for it. Use all your products, use everything you have, go in your stash, find stuff you can use, and really have fun making it. Tara Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life.